Preparing for this morning, uh, this message, I, I set out to look for a story, uh, a story about someone who had faced adversity in their life. And I ran across this wonderful video, and I would have loved to share it with you, but I was a, a bit nervous with our big space here that you might not be able to understand the speaker in this video. Uh, this video was about a woman named Karen, and it was by uh, the Skit Guys, if you're familiar with the Skit Guys. They're those funny guys that, that produce uh, Christian humor videos. But this one was, was a bit more serious. You see, Karen... Karen was born without her right jawbone, her right lung, and portions of her right appendages. She also had a cleft palate and a cleft lip, which greatly affected her speech. And as this video goes on to say, Karen, she's going to have to have a permanent trachea put in, which will likely stop her from being able to ever talk again, something she says she really likes to do. But yet Karen's faith is strong. I encourage you, if you have a chance this week, to go online and look up this video. It's called Karen's Story, Trials. And as I'm sure you can imagine, Karen's faith was tested many times throughout her life as she questioned, why, God, do I have to be the one to deal with these disabilities? But she goes on to tell the video uh, crew how it is these very disabilities that have given her the strength to face life and the faith to see it through. We all face trials, don't we? Perhaps our trials aren't just like Karen's, but we all face trials. For example, I've known people who've, who've lost loved ones long before it would seem fair. I've had family members who've been laid off from their job, leaving them without adequate income. I've watched as individuals battled courageously incurable diseases year after year. And I've known others who faced tragedies many times over, due to natural disaster. We all have to face trial. But I want us to take an example this morning from Karen. I want us to take an example from John the Baptist, who appeared in our Gospel reading today. We read that John had been imprisoned and was starting to have some questions about what Jesus was doing. You see, John had been receiving reports from his followers that Jesus, he had been doing things like teaching, healing, and blessing, instead of more messianic things like rebuking, conquering, and judging. In John's time, it would have been expected that anyone claiming to be the long-awaited Messiah would have had to show some qualifications for the job, like maybe taking out a few of the powerful ruling elite, for example. But instead, there was Jesus, helping those who were disabled while telling the poor the good news. No wonder John was a bit confused. Not to mention the fact that he was wasting away in prison after having spent years proclaiming that a Messiah would come and set prisoners free. Yeah, I'm thinking that I would have had some questions for Jesus too, had I been in his shoes. So John sent messengers to Jesus to ask if he was the one that, had, that he had been waiting for. Or if he should turn his attention and start looking for another guy, the true Savior, to come along. And Jesus' response is really quite wonderful. Let's hear it again. He says, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. How wonderful. 
right? I love this response for a couple of reasons. You see, Jesus' words, they reveal no judgment of John's question at all. Jesus seems to clearly understand why John would ask such a question, as his response is instantaneous and clearly filled with grace. I mean, how easy would it have been for Jesus to say something like, listen here, guys, go back and tell John that he can just stay there in jail. He knows darn well who I am. Just ask him who told him that I was his son when he baptized me. Now, of course, we know that Jesus would never have spoken this way. But he would have been well within his rights to have at least questioned John's loyalty at this point. But no. Jesus simply answered John's question. No judgment. No condemnation. Just an answer. This tells me something about Jesus. He can handle our doubts. When our faith is wavering, whether slightly or greatly, Jesus opens, opens his arms and welcomes our questions, our fears, and our doubts. How wonderful. This brings me to the second reason that I love Jesus' answer to John's question so much. He answers him. That's right. Jesus doesn't just send John's messengers away, dismissing them and their quest for truth. No. Jesus faces John's question head on. You see, people of faith, when we take our doubts to Jesus, he'll help us to sort them out. Our Lord is one who delights in lightening the burdens of our souls. Later on in this very same chapter, Jesus says, My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. You've heard those words, haven't you? Yeah, Jesus uses the image of a harness here, one that a a laborer can put on his or her shoulders to distribute great weight while carrying a heavy load. How great! Our Savior is also a load lightener. But take care to notice something else. Jesus did not say, I'm taking over your yoke, nor did he say, I'm getting rid of your burdens. All too often, I think our prayers during times of difficulty sound something like, Lord, make it stop. And not that there's anything wrong with asking for a hardship to end, but Jesus really is more about giving us the tools to face our trials than he is about wiping out our pain altogether. I love Jesus' answer to John's question because it is just that, a tool to help John face his current trial. Jesus cares about his followers so much that he doesn't just leave them to fend for themselves. But instead, he gives them just what they need to face the task that is before them, no matter how difficult that task might be. Congregation, how great is our God? Amen? Amen. Amen. So now we've come to the rest of this morning's passage. After Jesus provides John's messengers with an answer, and they take their leave, Jesus turns back to the crowds to which he'd been talking, and he asks them who they came to see. Did they come to see a prophet? Certainly, he says. And then he adds, Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And... For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John came, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. Wow. These are certainly high words of commendation, especially coming from Jesus. Am I right? And while scholars agree that the primary purpose of these verses that follow 
is so that Jesus can address the fact that the kingdom of God is at hand. But I think there might be something else at play here. I think Jesus is subtly commending John for coming to him in his hour of doubt, instead of searching elsewhere for answers, or worse yet, giving up his faith altogether. As we noted earlier, Jesus' response to John's question reveals that he can handle any doubt. And now, with this high acclamation, there might just be another, albeit subtle, message to those of us who do doubt from time to time. I think I hear Jesus saying, come to me first with your doubts. I don't want you to carry all of your doubts on your own any longer than you have to. Come to me, you who are burdened. I want to help you find the answers that will provide your soul the rest it seeks. Congregation, John's doubt-laced question showed Jesus not a man who had lost his faith, but rather a man who, who knew to seek help from the source of his faith the moment doubt began to linger. So I ask you this morning, what doubts, what fears might you be carrying around today? And what trials might be causing your questions? And then this, perhaps most important, have you gone yet to Jesus with your questions? Ours is a Savior who is always willing to listen, even when we doubt. Let us pray. Jesus, thank you for your willingness to hear us out. Thank you for not shying away from the difficult questions that we often ask. Help us to trust you with the deepest needs of our hearts and help us to rest assured that you are with us even when we're facing our most difficult trials. In your name we pray. Amen.